All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to get your images ready and into Scratch. So this is my plan. And so I see that I need a map and a tour guide. So I'm going to work on that first. For the map, I actually wanted to get a map of Chichen Itza. So I searched on that in Google Images. And this is the one I liked. Remember, background images are going to be wider than taller, so you wouldn't want to use something like that. That wouldn't work very well, but this does. And I am going to right click here and do open image and new tab. This way I know if the image is going to be big enough. Um, that'll be great. And now I'm going to save image as. And um, this is a great time to call it a name that makes sense to you. So some images are going to have these really weird names. Just rename it. This one's OK. Um, so I'm going to leave that. So I'm just going to say, yeah, that's fine. OK. And then um, remember, I wanted to give credit where this website came from. So I'm going to go there and link this as an image citation. So this is a map. Bam. So I got my image citation. And now I'm going to bring this image into Scratch. So you want to make sure you're logged in so you're going to be able to save everything and start with create. And I think the first thing you want to do is give this a name that makes sense. Um, so this is it's a field trip, virtual field trip. And I'm going to upload that backdrop. So backdrops get uploaded here. Um, you click the upload back button. Go find it. It probably is in downloads. Now one trick that I've learned, if your backdrop is not taking up the whole screen, you can convert it to vector. And then you'll get these uh, things so you can pull it. So some of some of you might not, it might not be all the way. So if you can convert it back to vector, then you can grab those things and pull it. Now we can delete this one because we're not going to use it. And um, then I want, this is going to be my first uh, image I know. So I want to have some starter code here. So I'm going to say when the flag clicks, I want to go to this image. So that'll always, because I'm going to be adding more backdrops here as I go. All right, so that's that. And then the other thing I have is a tour guide. So I decided to use something called Piskel to create my tour guide. I'm not that great drawing things, um, but I wanted to use something that was unique. And um, the serpent has this sort of pattern to it. So I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. So once I have this drawn, then I need to click export. Oh, if you haven't used Piskel before, sorry. Um, really easy, change colors here. Um, draw with this, erase with this, and you can paint bucket, you can do the mirror tool, lots of cool things to do. But once you have what you want, then you're going to go to export and make sure you export it as 320 by 320 so it's big enough to be a sprite and PNG, and then you're going to download. And it's going to save it as something called New Piskel. So I'm going to go back here, and that's going to be a, my sprite, my tour guide. So I'm going to go to Upload a Sprite, find the last New Piskel thing, and there it is. So that's a little big for me, although I'm also going to delete my cat there. So you can actually change the size here. It's easier always to change things smaller than to change them bigger. So I'm going to start it here so I can definitely see it. Again, I might be moving that sprite around later, so I want to make sure its start position is here. In this case, I place it here, and do you see these numbers change? Those numbers will change. So wherever it is I want it placed, I'm going to do that. So anytime I click the flag, it's always going to start in that place. All right, I think that covers uh, getting images in. So you'll want to do this for all your backdrops and all your sprites. There are, of course, lots of sprites you can choose from if you want to use uh, ones that are available. There's also a really nice um, paint program in 
scratch so you can use that and uh, good luck